All right, everyone, welcome, welcome to the Facebook Live at 5 presented by Mr. Stu TV. Today's topic is our electronics just problems for kids. My name is Stuart Perry. I go by Mr. Stu and I am a child therapist, master of social work and certified social worker in the state of Kentucky. I'm so excited to be talking with you today about this topic and uh, we're going to have a great time. Now, if you were looking for the, the talk about how much screen time is too much time or if uh, you were looking for an internet safety talk, this is not that talk. We're going to be talking about uh, child development uh, and how electronics affect childhood development and some, uh, some little tips to keep in mind. We will cover very briefly some safety and some screen time thoughts, but that is not the main thing that we're going to be talking about today. Today we're going to talk about what electronics can do to help kids and what a lot of, uh, I cannot say the word electronics, what electronics can do to uh, hinder childhood development. Before we get into that, though, let's go over just a few announcements. We have a lot of exciting things happening coming up with Mr. Sue TV, and uh, let me tell you all about them. So one of the first things that is coming up, this is on March 31st. We are having our virtual parenting conference. Parent is a verb. That is going to be Friday, March 31st from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. I will be speaking about how to raise little superheroes. My uh, colleague, Shamika Friedenstein, will be speaking about how to really connect with kids. And then parents of Grammy-nominated artist Jack Harlow and entrepreneurs Brian and Maggie Harlow are going to be talking about lessons they learned from raising a kid with big dreams. So we hope that you'll join us for that. You can find the information for that virtual parenting conference at mrstewtv.com. That's M-I-S-T-E-R-S-T-U-T-V.com. There's a banner at the on the homepage, and if you'll click on that, it will direct you to the parenting conference. Also, we have a YouTube channel that talks all about tough emotions. Some fun emotions, some tough emotions, but if your child struggles to understand and regulate their emotions, and let's face it, if they are a child, then they have trouble understanding and regulating their emotions. That's part of learning to grow up, and being mature does not mean never having a good time or never dancing around to random music. <laughs> being mature means being able to understand and regulate those emotions. So uh, I urge you to check out our YouTube channel. We have some videos on there for parents as well as some videos on there for kids. We are on YouTube and YouTube Kids, kind of depending on which audience you're looking for. But if you search Mr. Stu TV on YouTube or you can go to youtube.com slash at Mr. Stu TV. You do have to put that little at symbol there, but youtube.com slash at Mr. Stu TV. We make tough emotions, child's play. I think that your children will really like watching our content and I think that you'll also find that it's helpful for them to learn more about their emotions. In just a few weeks, two weeks, I am doing another Facebook Live. This one is about mental health meds, what they can and cannot do. As a child therapist, I hear all the time about different desires that parents have as far as their kids getting on mental health meds, and there are some concerns about mental health meds. So if you'll join me on March 12th again back here, that's a Sunday night at 5 p.m., if you will join me, then we will talk about mental health meds, some common meds, and then also what they can and cannot do. But for today, we are going to be talking about our electronics, just problems for kids. If you were here at the very start, then you know I said today's talk is not the internet safety talk. Today's talk is not the how much screen time is too much screen time talk. Today's talk is all about are electronics problems for kids? Not how to keep kids safe on electronics. That's another 
topic altogether. Not how much screen time, and we'll cover both of those things. We'll cover just a little bit of safety. We'll cover just a little bit of screen time thoughts. But are they just problems? Are video games just problems? Is the tablet, oh, the tablet, <laughs> is the tablet just a problem? Or are these things that can be really helpful for kids in their development? Does it hinder their development? Does it help their development? Does it do both? Are electronics just problems for kids? I have parents all the time come into my office and they will sometimes, their thought is to brag about, now we're not one of those parents that just lets the kid play on the tablet all the time. <laughs> or we're not one of those parents that just lets our kids watch uh, Hulu or Netflix or Disney Plus all the time. And oh, and you know, we, we watch what they're, what they're watching. We make sure that they're not watching anything inappropriate. And they just wanna brag about those things. But then there's still some kind of hurdle, still some kind of problem, still some kind of concern about their child's electronics usage. And basically it comes down to, are electronics even safe for kids? Or are they just problems? I think so many times when parents are telling me all these things, what they want from me is validation of, okay, what you're doing is great, what you're doing is fine, and what you're doing is healthy, or what you're doing is going to be helpful, whatever it might be. They want that validation from me, but really they want to know, are electronics just problems for kids? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Are they just problems? We're going to be talking about three things to really consider when you're allowing your child to play with electronics, and then three things for you to remember as a parent, as you're helping your parent, as you're helping your child live in this digital age where not too long ago, all of school was on electronics, all of everything was on electronics, and now in the world today, it's really hard to get by without being on electronics. So it's not something where right now we can say, just don't ever touch them. But can we use them in ways that are much more helpful than hurtful? That's what we're talking about today. Let's talk about some considerations, and then we'll talk about some things, some key things to remember as a parent. The first uh, consideration to make is that Toys, and I know that that's going to sound uh, silly to some, but toys and play allow for expression, while many times electronics, electronic games, allow for distraction. Let me say it again. Toys and play and all those things that go along with being a child allow for expression, while many times electronics don't allow for self-expression, they just allow for distraction. Now, that doesn't mean that that distraction is always bad or anything like that, but let me tell you a little bit about what I mean. I use play therapy techniques in my practice, and it's all that I use. I just do what's called child-centered play therapy. And basically what that means is that I have a bunch of toys in my office. Kids can come in and they get to express themselves and what they need through these toys. I don't direct their play. I do set limits about their play and I do what's called attending to their play. So I talk them through and maybe bring some things to their consciousness that their subconscious is expressing through the play. But when children play, they can't help but send a message because play is a child's natural language. Play is how children communicate. When children are playing rough, it's communicating something. When children are playing as caregivers, it's communicating something. When children are using lots of color, it's communicating something. When children are using no color at all, it's communicating something. Play is how a child communicates. 
as adults, we can use words. We have a verbal communication where all of us can kind of uniquely understand each other because we're able to communicate. Now there's different languages, but if you, for instance, I speak English. So if you can understand English, then I can express myself in ways to you. And at times we may need to negotiate that expression. I might need to express myself in different ways, but because we speak the same language, we can talk to each other. Children are that way. So many times as adults, we wonder how do kids make friends so easily? They just run over and they see that a child is playing with a toy that they like and they run up and they're like, do you want to be best friends? (laughs) And we wonder how do they do that? But that's because when children are playing, they are communicating. And so having that toy means just, it means much more than having that toy. Having a toy that another child likes means we can be friends. We communicate, we speak the same language. Well, in electronic play, even in electronic play, so playing on a tablet, playing on a video game, whatever it might be, even if it's not just watching a bunch of videos, but that play is guided in some way or another. Yes, I know there's open world games and there's all those things, but in one way or another, that play is guided play. And because it's guided, there comes a limit to how the child can express themselves. Whereas if I had an action figure, oh, and I meant to bring one because I've got a bunch of old WWF action figures of all the wrestlers. And when I was a child and I would play with those action figures, there was no limit to what I could have them do. I could have them slam each other. I could have them talk to each other. I could have them walk into my kitchen and make a meal. I could have them write notes to each other. I could have them do all kinds of things because with toys and with play, with just play, not electronic play, but playing outside or playing with sticks, it doesn't even matter what the toy is, but that play, that tangible play has very, 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 very few limits other than don't hurt yourself, don't hurt other people, and try not to break anything that's important. And when children are allowed to play in that way, they can express themselves. Right now, children are little bundles of anxiety. Man, they are dealing with so much. There's so much going on. And they are on these screens so often and tell me, I am a huge proponent of screens and content and all of that. Mr. Stu TV has our YouTube channel that is all about kids watching these videos and learning about their emotions. So I'm not saying don't ever let your kid be on electronics, but when they're on electronics, that communication, that expression of emotion, of that anxiety that they are little bundles of is very limited. And so it provides for a distraction, but then when that distraction goes away, they're having to deal with all of this anxiety and they don't know how to do it because they weren't allowed to express. They've just been distracted, distracted, distracted. This is why it can be so difficult for a child to give up the tablet, to give up the Chromebook, to give up the phone, because they are dealing with all this anxiety that they have not expressed because they've just been distracted. And when you take away the distraction, all that anxiety rushes back and they have to actually deal with it now. And it's so difficult. So when you only allow a child, not only allow, when a child is driven much more towards electronic play, it's much more about distraction than it is about expression. And we need to teach children how to express themselves. As a parent, aren't you frustrated when your child gets home from school and you say, hey, how was school today? And they say, good, and go to their room, hop on the tablet, hop on the Xbox, hop on their phone. It's just distraction. And we've got to help children learn to express themselves. Now, express, and then go ahead, go be distracted. You know what, if uh, if you are on a road trip, there should be some time where <laughs> maybe the kids just need a distraction and that's okay. But just understand that when the child is playing on anything electronic, 
It is much more a distraction versus expression. And that's something also to watch for if it seems that they are craving it more and more and more and more. It could be that they are trying to distract themselves from something that they need to express. That's the first thing to consider, distraction versus expression. Next up to consider is this feeling of just being overwhelmed. If you've ever been sitting around and you have more than one thing ping and ding at the same time or very soon after each other, woo, you know how overwhelmed you can become as an adult. So if there are pings and dings and bells and horns and alarms and everything else going off for children, imagine how quickly they can become overwhelmed. And then think about our first point to consider about distraction versus expression. If all those pings and dings are just distractions, then they'll be distracted from the things that they need to be doing. So not only will all the pings and dings overwhelm them on them their own, but then they'll become overwhelmed because they've been distracted from the things that they need to be doing. Pings and dings and whistles and horns and alarms, all of those things are overwhelming. So this is something to consider when your child has a tablet or a phone on laptops or computers. Those notifications can be uh, limited. It's not as much of the pings and dings going off. Now, while you're at work, I understand there might be the chat thing that's popping up and emails popping up and all that. But typically for a child on a laptop, there's not a whole lot of notifications going off. However, those things like a phone or a tablet, even Xbox, PlayStation, have the notifications that pop up. It's something important for you to consider with your child. That might be a great conversation to have with them. What are the notifications that you need to see right now? That could be, if it's a phone or a tablet, it could be, you know what, if I send a text message, you as the parent, if I, parent, send a text message to you, I want that notification to pop up every time. But maybe let's turn off Instagram notifications. Maybe let's turn off TikTok notifications. Maybe let's turn off YouTube notifications, unless it's Mr. Stu TV. <laughs> you can leave that notification on. But think about all of those pings and dings that your child is hearing throughout the day and understand that those sounds may start to become overwhelming for them where this source of what could be a positive uh, distraction for them at times is now becoming overwhelming. So then you get in this catch 22 where it's, I need to be distracted because I'm overwhelmed so I go to the thing that is actually overwhelming me and then I get more overwhelmed and eventually it will just lead to shutdown. You as an adult may have felt this feeling where it just feels like your whole day was just pings and dings and over and over and phone calls and text messages and everything, everything, everything. And maybe you didn't get any work done because all the, the school kept calling and the teacher was texting and all this is going on and you are completely overwhelmed. But then you get home at the end of the day and all you want to do is mindlessly scroll through TikTok because you're overwhelmed by this same thing. Electronics can be overwhelming for adults. If they can be overwhelming for adults, they can definitely be overwhelming for kids. So it's important that you as a parent decide some of the things that may or may not be notifications for your child and also have that conversation with them about feeling overwhelmed by electronics. If you're constantly available, it's overwhelming. Even if you're just constantly available to friends, it's overwhelming. So another thing to consider with this feeling of overwhelm is what are the hours that electronics are allowed? I'm not talking so much about screen time, but what I'm saying is, is there a point that it really is just the cutoff? And the reason I said that it's that this is not the talk about um, safety and this is not the talk about screen time 
is because we'll talk about it later, but every child is different. But this feeling of overwhelm, there should be a time where it's cut off. You are not available between the hours of, let's say, 10 p.m. and 8 a.m., whatever it might be. I'm not saying that's the rule, but you are not available during those times. You, as the parent, need to demonstrate that behavior as well. But for your child or the children in your care, can there be a time where it's cut off, where they are not reachable, even by friends, because being reachable all the time is overwhelming. First thing to consider was that electronics provide for distraction over expression. Second thing to consider is that electronics can often be overwhelming. And the third thing to consider, this does have a little bit to do with internet safety, but electronics can lead to a lot of exposure for children. What that means, I, I mean it in two different ways. I mean that children can become exposed to things that they are not yet ready to see. Right now, the average age of exposure to pornography is 11 years old. Now, I don't say that as any uh, uh, fear factor type thing. What I mean is that if your child is on the internet a lot, it's likely that they have seen or will soon see some type of pornography through that uh, outlet or even just graphic content. Things like news stories that they're not yet prepared for that maybe just pop up on a home page. Things like uh, videos on YouTube talking about things that their minds don't quite comprehend just yet, and so their brain will jump to all sorts of conclusions because they got exposed to it at too young of a developmental level. But while children can be exposed to things on the internet, the other thing to remember is that the internet can expose children. That children, and I know that chat rooms aren't necessarily a huge, huge thing anymore, but things like even social media where you can message each other on social media or things like Playstations or Xboxes where you can make connections with people all over the world who can be anybody they want to be because it's on the internet. So it's important to remember that children can be exposed to things on the internet and children can be exposed on the internet. So as you're considering our electronics just problems for kids, it's important to understand what boundaries need to be set up so that your child is not exposed to anything that they are not yet prepared for and that they are not exposing themselves anywhere that is not uh, appropriate for them to be, where they are not in chat rooms, for instance. Uh, it's important to keep kids safe. And so as you are considering your child's development and your child's developmental age and their understanding of different things, understand that the internet and electronics have exposure to everything in the entire world and even created things that are just wild. So as you consider our electronics are just problems for kids, keep in mind what your child is being exposed to and some ways that they could become exposed because of electronics. First thing to consider was that electronics allow for distraction versus expression. Distraction versus expression. The second thing to consider is that feeling of being overwhelmed. And the third thing to consider is that children can become exposed to things and that they can become exposed by electronics. Let's talk about just some things to remember as a parent. Number one, kids mimic behaviors. If you are constantly on your phone, if you are sitting there at the dinner table eating with your child and you are texting, but you look over and you tell them to not do that, 
it ain't gonna work. <laughs> if you are constantly on your phone, if you're texting while you're driving, if you are doing different things, understand that kids mimic behaviors. It doesn't mean that they parrot behaviors. What is a phone to you might be an Xbox to them, but it does mean that they mimic behaviors. If you are never showing that you set limits with your electronics, it's gonna be very hard for your child or your children or the children in your care to understand that they need to set boundaries with their electronics. Kids will mimic behaviors. The next thing to remember is that if you are going to say, hey, we need to step away from the electronics for a while, have something in mind. I'm not saying that it needs to be their favorite thing in the entire world, but have something in mind to replace the screen with. Replace their screen. That's what that little graphic is of. It's of a phone or a tablet screen actually being replaced. But what I mean is replace the screen with something. Don't just say no more screen. Say, hey, we're going to play a game of Uno together. We're going to leave our electronics over there. It's stating it in the positive rather than the negative. Rather than here's the thing you're going to give up, it's here's the thing you're going to get. So we are going to go to the movies and you're going to leave your phone here. I'm going to leave my phone in the car, whatever it might be. Uh, we are going to uh, go on a walk and I'm just going to take my phone for, an emer for emergencies, but it's going to be muted and in my pocket. And even if I feel it, I'm not going to be answering it or looking at it those types of things. Make sure that you are replacing the screen, not just demanding that it be given up. And then the final thing to remember, and this is what I've been saying over and over again throughout the whole thing, why I cannot give the child safety on the internet talk and why I cannot give the, uh, hey, here's how much screen time is appropriate for your child. It's because every single child is different. You know your child. And if you will have a discussion with your child about different things, then you can understand, okay, here's what they're ready for. Here's what they're not ready for. Maybe they're ready to have a tablet that doesn't have the internet on it, but they're not ready for that tablet with the internet. Maybe they are ready to be able to play Nintendo Switch. They're not yet ready to play Xbox. And it's not just because they're better at the Switch. It's because maybe there's some things that they could be exposed to on the Xbox that maybe Nintendo Switch won't have. Maybe they can download YouTube kids on their phone, but they can't have actual YouTube. And maybe if you find that they did download actual YouTube, they lose that screen for a little while. Every child is different. And maybe it's okay for your child to have 30 minutes of screen time. Maybe it's okay for them to have 90 minutes. Maybe it depends on their behavior. Whatever it might be, every child is different. But take into consideration all of these things that we've talked about today. That electronics provide for distraction, not expression. So keep that in mind with your child's ability to express themselves. If that's something you're working on, maybe limit more of that screen time. The second thing that children can quickly become overwhelmed by all those notifications, pings, dings, all the information that's there can even become overwhelming. And you can know with a discussion with your child or with uh, your partner, with your child, you can all discuss how your child specifically, their needs can be met uh, through electronics, but without, be without becoming overwhelmed. And then uh, finally, that um, it is important to remember that children can be exposed to things on the internet and on electronics that they are not yet ready for, and children can be exposed by the internet electronics and maybe some things that they are not yet ready for. All right. Well, uh, one thing to keep in mind is that every child is different. And so when we ask the question, are electronics just problems for kids? I don't think that we can say that's all they are. I think that electronics have been able to bring our world together in times when this would not have been possible. As a matter of fact, I am using electronics right now to talk about electronics with you. So no, electronics are not just problems for kids, but without considering these things and without remembering some of these things, they can become a big problem 
for kids. So make sure that you remember it. And if you are looking for something positive to replace some of that screen time for your child, then make sure to check out the Mr. Stu TV YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Mr. Stu TV. Also, if this was helpful to you and you'd like some more parenting tips and be able to ask some parenting questions, please join us for our virtual parenting conference 2023. That's Friday, March 31st. Parent is a verb from 1130 a.m. to 130 p.m. You can check out mrstutv.com. That's M-I-S-T-E-R-S-T-U-T-V dot com and click on the banner on the homepage and you will be directed to the site about our virtual parenting conference. And then last but not least, uh, be back in two weeks for the next Facebook Live at 5, Mental Health Meds, What They Can and Cannot Do. I will see you back here for that event. Uh, I hope that today's talk has been helpful for you, and I hope that you were able to learn just a few things to consider and a few things to remember as you are parenting in the digital age. Thanks so much for joining us, and I will see you again next time. Until then, spread the word and share the love. Bye-bye.